Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to episode 5 of 5 on Test Tube Plus. This week is our series on survival. Super exciting. We've talked about how humans learn to survive, how we've adapted over time, whether cities are even a good idea for our survival, and how we're gonna survive in the future by like transforming deserts into lush environments. But now is the big question. Are we less able to survive now than we were a thousand years ago? Are humans getting weaker? Today, we are more intelligent than our ancestors in some ways, but we're less intelligent in other ways because survival changes over time. We don't survive the same way that our ancestors survived, right? That being said, natural selection, not as useful as it used to be. We don't pick mates based on classical survival anymore. We've shifted to a whole new kind of survival. And it's almost as if we've built this new kind on top of old survival, right? Hunter-gatherers had to go out, they had to find food for the table, bring it back so they could have progeny and a mate. Today, we don't go out and find the food by hunting it, but we use our intelligence, we use economics, we use our skill set in order to bring food home. So it's not that it's different or the same. It's a completely different way to look at survival today. It's more complicated. Survival of the fittest isn't about being physically and mentally fit anymore. It's about being in the right place at the right time and maybe gaining economically. It's about getting the right job out of college right before you end up you know, getting huge pay raises because it's a huge bubble or because you hit the right job on the right track and you were amazing at this thing. Or maybe it's having parents that did that and now you're living off of their success and thus you're surviving better than you would have. The human brain, of course, has not evolved as fast as our society has. So when it thinks of survival, when you think of survival, you probably think more of survival skills. When you say, I know how to survive, I'm a survivalist, you're not saying, I know where to get the best food in the city. <laughs> you're probably saying, I know how to skin a rabbit, right? But how many rabbits do you really need to skin in an urban area. And since more than half of the world's population live in cities, what are we talking about? Snake bites, for example, cause only five to six fatalities annually in the US. It's like 60 deaths in a decade. From 2000 to 2010, 176 people died because a TV fell on them. Think about it. What's more dangerous, snakes or TVs? I mean, under those statistics, TVs are more than twice as dangerous, almost three times. But because our ancestors had to avoid snakes to survive and our brain hasn't evolved yet, we haven't adapted to our new type of survival, we're not afraid of TVs. We don't tie our TVs down to make sure that they don't fall on us and kill us. But we are afraid of snakes. I'll give you the heebie-jeebies. And that might be the causes of some of our irrational phobias today. They're based on these ancient ways of surviving that we haven't yet adapted for because our society has moved so fast and our brains and our evolution move so slow. But that doesn't mean survival isn't important. And it doesn't mean that survival of today is somehow weaker. It just means that it's changed. If you looked at chimpanzees, a chimpanzee is much stronger than us. Now, if you go back in history to when humans and chimpanzees tracks diverged from some common ancestor, the ch a chimp-like ancestor was a powerful athlete. This is according to Dan Lieberman, a biological anthropologist at Harvard University. And he said they were much stronger and faster than humans, but they had no endurance. Two million years ago, our ancestors, Australopithecus, had longer arms and stronger upper bodies, which would make them better climbers and gymnasts than we are today. But when it came to walking and running, they suffered due to a lack of locomotion. They couldn't keep it up. They couldn't run like we can now. We're taller, we're leaner, we got thinner hips. We can go the distance like Disney's Hercules, but that doesn't mean that we're worse at surviving or that they were better, but we're surviving for different reasons. Come with me on that? Great. Besides physical differences, we also have dependencies, and that makes people feel weaker. Nobody likes to be dependent on things. And electricity is a big one. And now today, the internet is becoming another big one. There's talk of the internet be being considered a utility, but also being considered a human right. 1.2 billion people currently live without electricity. This is as of 2013. And 4.4 billion people currently live without the internet. Does that mean that we're dependent on it? 
Does that mean we need those things to survive? It might, but it might not. Our major cities, if we lost electricity tomorrow, would probably be okay. The city would still be there, but most of the people in the city would probably not handle it very well if it was out for too long. During major power outages, there are more reports of people acting civilly and working together than there are people kind of going out on the fringes and looting and doing negative things. In 1977, in New York, there was a blackout that was called the Night of Terror, and city blocks were looted and they were set ablaze. 3,776 arrests were made that night, and not all of the looters, thieves, or arsonists were apprehended or arrested, so that's not even all the people that were doing wrong. However, again, that's the media reporting on it. There are more reports of people behaving civilly, and if you recall Superstorm Standy, People were putting power out on the street, the people who had it, for the people that didn't. Because we're fine sharing these resources. We all know how to survive in an urban area. And part of our survival does seem to be having the dependency on electricity. Does that mean we're weak? I don't think so. Long term, if we were to lose power, for example, to find out if we are weaker for it, it's wildly speculated that a lot of people would die if we lost power in the long term. But would they die because they lost access to electricity? Probably not. What they really lose access to is food, they lose access to clean water, they lose access to medical care. They don't need electricity to survive, but they do need food, water, and medical care, right? So it's not that we're dependent on electricity to survive, but we are in some way as well. It's more complicated than it used to be. So you tell me. If we can't survive the scourge of falling TVs, what would happen if we lost infrastructure and power? We'd probably be fine. We'd probably be okay. We wouldn't live as long as we do now. Our average lifespan might decrease, and there would definitely be people moving away from some of these major urban areas if we had no power. But we would survive because we would learn to adapt to that new reality. Let me put it in perspective in case you're doubting this. If you took someone from an indigenous population and you put them into New York City, they would probably have trouble surviving. But they have the things that we like to call survival skills. They know how to hunt and gather their food. They know how to skin a rabbit, to use an example from earlier. But what they don't know how to do is go to the supermarket and get the right food for them and then go prepare it at home. It doesn't mean that urban survival is better or that indigenous survival was better. It just means we've adapted to survive in a different way over time. That does make me think though, have we hit a critical mass where people just don't understand about indigenous survival anymore? If the power went out all over the country, all over the world, and it never came back on, what would happen? Indigenous populations, they'd be a-okay. And a lot of people would also be A-OK, -okay, especially in rural populations. But in H.G. Wells' classic, The Time Machine, there was a group of people called the Aloy, and they lived on the surface of this planet. And Morlocks kept the lights on and the heat working, and they understood how that worked, but the Aloy didn't. So there's a huge fear among survivalists that we are becoming the Aloy. I would posit that we kind of already are. Do you know how your toaster works? Could you make a toaster? Probably not. And that's probably the simplest appliance in your house. It's like $5 for a toaster. Are we the alloy already? I don't know. What do you do if your phone is dead and you have to get home? How do you do that? What do you do, what do, you do if the power goes out at 7 p.m.? It's too early for bed, it's too late to go out and play, there's no TV, Netflix, internet. What do you do then? These don't seem like survival skills, but they really are. In modern society, in an urban society, in modern times, we need to know where our food comes from. We need to know where we get our fresh water. We need to know how to entertain ourselves because we gotta keep psychologically and mentally fit. Survival now is different than survival was, but it's not better or worse, it's just different. What I took away from this whole massive amount of research is survival is a shifting goalpost. Every time you think you're getting there, how to survive has changed. In the past, yes, survival was learning to grow food, learning to hunt, learning to build your own shelter. But that's not survival for the average Westerner anymore. Sure, we want it to be. We want those survival skills because they seem valuable to us. But that is not a survival skill. What a survival skill today is, is being able to pay your bills. 
Knowing how to eat right and exercise and understand your body, to shop at the right grocery store, to date online. <laughs> These are all survival skills in modern society and they seem weaker. But gosh, some of these things are really, really hard. Educating yourself is difficult, but that's a survival skill in the modern day, right? You make more money, you'll be able to buy more food for your family and have a better life. That's a survival skill. But it's different than it used to be. That being said, go out and learn how to skin a rabbit if you want. It's still valuable, but it's probably not a survival skill anymore. Our survival is basically dependent upon our ability to innovate now. Thankfully, there are some dedicated to doing just that, like the United States Air Force. Powered by airmen, fueled by innovation, thanks once again, for a fifth time, for making this series possible. I hope you feel like you understand everything you've ever wanted to know about survival, and maybe you've thought about it a little more because of this than you would have before. If you don't feel like you have, make sure you go check out all five of our survival episodes. You can also send me a tweet at Trace Dominguez on Twitter if you like. We can talk a little bit about it. Subscribe for more Test Tube Plus and come back tomorrow for our next series. And thank you for watching. <laughs>